So give me one second and we'll get started. All right. Um, so Zach O'Farrell uh, here, uh, Director of Education Programs at the Afro-Latin Jazz Alliance. Um, here today with our you know regular week, uh, Wednesday Mac Masterclass series. Today we have the illustrious uh, Practicatron, Ricky Rodriguez. Uh, it was one of the baddest bass players that uh, that I've had the fortune of knowing and 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 playing with and hanging with in my life. It also happens to be my roommate. So any weird echoing, if you think if you think you're hearing me double, that that's prob that probably has something to do with it. But I'm gonna turn once we get started. I'm gonna turn my microphone off so that you know that we don't run into that issue. But yeah, I just wanted to say everyone, thank you for being here, and uh, you got it, Ricky. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you, Zach. Uh... Well, thank you for joining me this beautiful summer afternoon, right? It just changed like from yesterday to today. <laughs> uh, yeah, Zach told me about the the to this master class, you know, and uh, and I said, man, what can I talk, you know? So I don't want to talk like like the same thing that our other bass player, other musicians they talk. So I just trying to that's what I put the subject into my influence. Uh, into uh, into sound, how all my influence in, in, in music and in life, I develop and I create my own sound, in my, my own sound on the bass through those influence. So, um, but I'm gonna start playing uh, uh, a, a new composition that I'm planning recording a solo album soon. Um, and this is really brand new. So it's kind of like a world premiere for everyone here. So this is entitled Innocence. It's called in Spanish Innocencia. Let me know if you hear the bass clear, okay? Because <laughs> this is kind of new for me doing this stuff. This is you hear the bass?
was uh, Innocencia, Innocence, uh, inspired in this uh, pandemic that we're living those days, you know, crazy days. Uh, and um, it's going to be, you know, in my coming up album based solo. So uh, normally the way I do this kind of masterclass, you know, back in the days when you do masterclass in front of real people, <laughs> I normally uh, ask everyone can ask me a question and then uh, we can move from there and uh, or the other way I can just talk quickly some influence in my life but I don't want to get too much in that thing like uh, um, like you know mention the same thing like a lot of guys that mentioned before but uh, but I, I I can um if anyone have a question we can go we can start from there but if 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 no I can I can start mention names and talk you know so um but uh but anyway uh before before that um I just want to like definitely mention some names that are really really uh inspire in my in my career um, and in my life too you know um and those names uh will are uh, ours uh like federico silva you know he was my my base classical teacher he was disciple of pablo casal so he passed away so he's, he was really 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 great influence on me and that's what uh that li la last piece that uh, you guys hear they have a lot of between classical training you know classical techniques you know because he was not only was a bass player, he was an uh, incredible pianist, incredible viola player, so great ear. So, and uh, actually, it was F Federico was the the one that I pushed me to to start bass when I was like nine, you know. Um, um, well, and then song influence in besides that, you know, like uh, every bass player have influence in different bass players, but uh, I have like a great bass player that some of them they pass away uh some of them still around so like eddie guagua rivera you know the great bass player from bata Cumbele, you know we just had we had the chance to hang talk play together um another guy that uh he's still living in puerto rico one of the greatest uh players he played with eddie palmieri with the puerto rican star then his name is polito huertas you know um of course this this Next name you probably hear people that are really into Latin music, Bobby Valentin, you know, which is played with the funny old star, you know, and uh, another guy that you know, I was when I was growing up in the in the the Latin music and the Latin community, uh, Andy Gonzalez, he was another guy that I started getting to my ears when I was still in, in middle school because he's uh, his brother, he was a good friend of mine, Jerry, Jerry Gonzalez which is unfortunately we lost him too um and i was really really unfortunate to go to jerry's mom house you know so it was like a hanging you know it's like being roommate with zach but uh, with jerry gonzalez so it was really really uh, uh amazing you know get the experience from jerry gonzalez so but andy was part of my influence even andy was here in new york while i was in puerto rico but i was like listening to into records with uh manio kendo you know um and uh, of course for Apache, um, and then you know like that's kind of like a, like like in the in the in the Latin side, but uh, in the jazz side, that I, I also started studying jazz when it was in, and also in middle school. Uh, one of the the first boys that I hear on bass that I still keeping with me all the time, and I share I share this quote every time I go, every time I play, every time I'm teaching. It's like a uh, Ray Brown, you know is that's for me that's the best sound that i hear in an acoustic bay in my life you know and i haven't i haven't i never hear life but uh just looking through videos and look and asking questions to guys that saw him it's like this guy was unique and uh it's funny because ray ray brown say like a it's a quote that i was sharing when he was doing master class and i, and I used him to it's like a, the most important thing that you can do with this instrument it's like it's not playing fast or playing solos it's like uh get a good sound playing tune and uh and uh, and, uh on time you know yes it's good 
to have those things because that's the way bass player work. But uh, if you had the technique and the dexterity to move around, you can do it too. But uh, and I'm talking about every instrument, piano, drums, etc. Every instrument. So it's just use those those technique to a specific thing, you know. But that's what it called influence and life because music. You you keep learning music through life too, you know. Music is not only a box or, or losing a record forever. And uh, no, it's a, it's a process, you know. So, and uh, as a bass player, yes, I uh, coming through the, to the, this from the ground, you know, start playing with so many people in, in Puerto Rico. I was so young and yeah, I just, I just want to play fast. You know, I was, <laughs> I want to be the best. And, uh, and the, the old guys look at me like, uh, what are you doing? You know, so it's like, and it's like, I'm trying to impress, you know, it's like, well, if you continue that, that will be your last gig in life. So, so you know, it's funny because then you you start getting those experience eventually year by year, traveling, traveling by many, many musicians. And then you finally get those quotes that uh, you learned years ago with older guys, that uh, older guy that told you, you know, like, hey, man, do this. So and now it's my it's my turn to say to the young guys, man, keep it this way. So, you know, so when it's your solo, Hey, this is your solo. Do whatever you want, you know. But uh, but uh, when it's comping, you know, like uh, it's very important, you know. And that's what I love this quote by, by the great Ray Brown. And um, so moving from Ray Brown, um, uh, I had I have I was lucky to to when I moved to New York take lessons with one of my two favorite acoustic bass player, which is they coming from one guy. It coming from. I don't know if you're familiar with Charlie Hayden, you know, and uh, so uh, they're both coming from the same school. And uh, one is Larry Grenadier and the other guy is Scott Collie. So they were big impact on my my playing too. And um, but also I've been noticed that a lot of players, they always like, oh, I play saxophone. Oh, I got influenced by Coltrane. I got influenced by Paquito. I got... Or piano players, yeah, I got influenced by like Chick Corea, I got influenced, but they, I, I, I mean, I don't get influenced only with bass players, so I got influenced by, with singers, with, with drummers, with piano players, with quattro players. So, so that's what that's what I, I love about music because I got the chance to get inspired by listening to Andy Montañez, incredible salsa singer from Puerto Rico, uh, watching Cheo Feliciano singing. So, I was like wow you know what is it sounds like a bass you know when he's singing so also one of my in mentors on the latin music uh also co-founder of batacumbele eric figueroa so that guy man that guy is like when i hear him playing piano so only piano solo by himself you can hear the the, the tambor you know la tumbadora you can hear the bass you can hear the melody you can hear the cuatro it's everything there so so it was like a big, 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 big influence on me, and I was really lucky to work with him for almost ten years before I moved to New York, and uh, and uh, now he lives in in Texas. Um, so I'm trying to go faster with influence because I want to hear you guys ask me questions. So, but uh, just trying to process people that uh that got an impact on me in my influence, so I get into the music that I play this day on, on, or even when I compose music those days. So, um, cause for me, I divide this kind of, when I talk to Zach to name this kind of masterclass with influence, you know, like getting developed influence into your sound. Uh, there's a lot of people, you know, don't make me wrong, but uh, I put it like in three layers. One thing is like people that, really influence you to do what you do right now right someone that you see and say wow uh, i saw this guy playing trombone when i was like five six years old i want to play trombone because it was a big impact in your life when you were six the other guy is in the middle it's like mentors or teachers that's when you start studying in a school with a teacher and the 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 and the last one the the third one is like influence that you listen in albums record like uh uh watching playing live uh or or 
or they call you to play. So, and there's that, that third one, there's millions because I, I've been listening to so many people, but there is always the impact on my life that I always mention those names, whatever I go. And, uh, so the, 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 the next guy that I'm going to mention, it was also a big influence on my composition uh, and into improvisation. His name is uh, Joe Locke. He's an incredible Bible from player and uh, an incredible piano player. I don't know if you hear about him, but uh, you should check it out if you're really into composition or jazz, you know. But uh, we did three albums and uh, we we went on tour and we learned. I, I learned a lot from him. So, um, as I mentioned before, the singers that I got influenced in the Latin side. Uh, I mentioned Andy Montañez, I mentioned Cheo Feliciano, and also another voice that it was, I'm pretty sure it was not only me, the impact, that kind of voice, and the swing of that guy, is Lalo Rodriguez, that he, you can find his work with Eddie Palmieri too, incredible voice, incre amazing, his rhythm, you know, it's like unbelievable, you know, and um, on, per on, on the percussion side, um, I also was lucky when I was also so young, you know, work with another great timbalero player, but also he played drums, but uh, people know him more with his work in timbas with Tommy Livencia. Uh, I'm talking about uh, Endel Dueño. And uh, that also that guy is, you know, we were so much that uh, I learned a lot from him. And it's funny because I was just trying before we start this master class, I was trying to trying to share videos with you guys but uh something happened with my my computer or something that uh i could try to to share a video because i just find out this video this morning with endel and i was i probably I, i'm like 16 you know playing with him and eddie figueroa is also playing piano let me see if i can if i can uh share this video with you guys so that would be great um let me uh sorry let me see Right, right, too. Okay, have it here. All right, let's let's try. Share computer sound and the dial. Can you guys hear this? I mean, can you someone uh maybe go with your thumbs if you hear this? Because I I don't I, I'm gonna play now. Oops, it got free. Okay. Here, Ricky, send send me the link, and I think I can I think I can play it so everyone can hear it. But what do you hear now? Because I'm playing right now. No, 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 no. Okay. Um, man, technology. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Uh, too bad. Um, don't worry. I will send everything to Zach so you can watch at home. Like, so don't worry. I'm gonna send everything to Zach. So uh, probably, probably I can play in iTunes some music. So maybe that it would be easy for me. You know, for some for some reason I got trouble. Um, let me try now iTunes. Okay. Okay. Same thing. Let me know if you hear this. Can you guys hear that? No, we're Nothing? not hearing it. Here, Ricky. Uh, yeah. Let me. I can. I can. I can play it. I can play it so people can hear it from my computer if you want. Well, the the thing I had, you had to look all this the the, the playlist I have. I don't want you to go through that thing. <laughs> don't worry, I'm gonna no because I uh, it's right now I I'm gonna send you everything to you so they can have it because it's okay. it's important it's important as part of my influence you know and uh, eventually you know it will be great sharing this with at the same time because this makes sense you know but I don't know why this is happening with this program that Zach told me to download. <laughs> <laughs> don't man everything like, sucks hey don't don't say no you know 
That's good advice. <laughs> let me let me try again. Zach, are you okay? Tell me if you can hear this. No. Yeah. Okay. Cool. No. no never mind. It's, it's okay. Yeah. Don't worry. I'm gonna send everything to him so you can have it. So you can, you know, because there's a lot of uh, music that I put together years that I was, you know, since I before I moved to Puerto, before I moved to New York, I'm transitioned moving to New York. You know, like a lot of artists that I play, and I I get I just grab different tracks. You know, that I really love it. Um. But anyway, yeah, I mean, I was about to play something about that record that I did with Ender. Well, did you hear that? Yeah, but d don't worry, don't play, okay. man. Don't play. Right. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep uh, talking, you know, and then later you send everything to them. So yeah, it won't be sent. So anyway, um, yeah, that 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 um video that I was about to play, you know, that I couldn't, uh, it was Ender Dueño, you know, and that record was like 2001 released in 2002 it's called energy so that was kind of the last thing that i did in puerto rico before i decided to move to to new york you know to expand my my knowledge um, and learn more into the jazz scene you know and uh, just moving to new york uh, early 2004 i in less than two months i was lucky to work with uh Papo Vasquez, <laughs> that I I don't know if you're hearing like trombone player, uh, because he's connecting with Eric Figueroa. So e Eric called him and said, "Man, that's a young guy moving to the to New York. You should call him." You know, so so I played with Papo at the beginning. You know, my first three months playing with him, and uh, we did an album together. But then in that same year, between 2004 2005, I got a call to play with one of the greatest percussion all time Ray Barreto which is I was about to share another video me playing with him um, which if you don't know Ray Barreto you should know Ray Barreto and uh, not because you don't like Latin music or not because you don't like classical music because that guy he got both sides so heavy you know and uh, and I, I can tell you because I was next to him and I played for almost two years before he got sick and uh i live experience that uh, nobody knows but one day i'm gonna put it out there because that guy he got so he know more than a singer so you know he know more repertory than a singer so and uh, he worked with if you can you know if you read about ray Barreto, he worked with wes montgomery charlie parker ron carter the list is called forget it it's, so, it's really long so so i was lucky to be next to him in the playing and asking questions, you know, and I also when I, when it's about time to play, it was incredible, you know, because it's just, I mean, until I broke, I'm, I'm like a student. I feel like a student and I always want to feel like a student. For me, being a teacher, I don't believe in that. So for me, when I, when I teach to another guy, I'm, we learning from each other. I'm learning from you guys because I mean, music, we never, we're not gonna, gonna stop learning. There's too much out there. There's too way much. So, and, uh, and that's where Ray Barreto feel the same way and say, well, same way. We're on the same page, man. We keep learning. When I, when I brought this approach from, from, by the way, I'm from Ponce, Puerto Rico. So, <laughs> um, from like La Sonora Ponceña, you know, if you heard that salsa band, you know, so I start bringing my own energy so he just like it man and he's like man you know what you should come one day and and, and um, go to Copacabana and, and play with my salsa band because he had two bands he had the jazz band that I was working with and he also had the the, the, the salsa band which is Ruben Rodriguez I think another uh, great bass player he was playing with them back back then so I was I show up and I play one tune you know and it was amazing it's like wow i can't believe that i played with ray barreto in the salsa band you know so so yeah I, that's another guy that i always i mention in my influence like forever you know it's it's, it's, it's amazing you know not only in latin like i say it's not only in latin music it's just in jazz in classical music the way he see stuff the way he business too you know so moving from that the same year 
and got another call to play with one of the greatest piano players, Chick Corea, too. So, and I, uh, uh, same thing. I was so young, and Chick said, well, no, I saw you playing back in Puerto Rico. And I said, well, I know who you are right now. I don't know why you expect me to do it. And say, just play the bass, you know. So, so for, for with Chick, it was something like short, but special, you know, because Chick, it gave me the lesson of life. They say, well, you you know what? That's why we have to be ready because um, you never know when it's going to be the time like somebody's going to call you and say, well, I'm good to know. <laughs> so we did a couple of gigs, you know, back in, in, in Europe and, and Florida too. And uh, right there, the trans everything happened so fast to me in less than one year when I moved to New York because from there, I got a, another call, an email with a, another big influence on myself because uh, I, I, I just respect that guy, not only in music, but it's just as a person. He's an amazing human being. I'm talking about Branford Marsalis, you know. Um, Branford, uh, as you know, you know, it's a big family, you know, the Ellis Marsalis, you know, Del Fayo, Jason, Winton. Um, but Branford and me, we had so much fun, you know, like uh, talking on the phone, you know, talking about life. Uh, he loved Puerto Rico. And uh, same thing. I don't know how that happened, but Branford saw me playing in Puerto Rico. So I was playing with everyone in Puerto Rico, but he probably was there uh, in vacation and he saw me. I didn't know. So and uh, when he called me, I, I have to tell you, I was really scared. Because, you know, when you see jazz, because now we say, we're talking about the jazz guys, you know, like, uh, say, well, Bramford, man, I remember Bramford, you know, it's like, this guy's like, everybody know the Marsalis <laughs> family. So, so I ended up recording an album with him, which is, was something completely new for me as a Latino. And uh, he opened a lot of doors to me because they saw that uh, I could do more that I thought that I could do it, you know. Um, and then from, the, from, I think after Bramford, the door opened and it stayed open because I started getting calls with so many people, you know, like after that, you know, that was David Sanchez, you know, well-known saxophone from Puerto Rico. I got Miguel Senon. I got like a, a, a Michel Camelo, you know. I also uh, work with uh, um, Arturo Fighter, and um, the Afro Latin Jazz Orchestra too, and until it's fine. I, I don't want to mention all the names, but I, if the list going on and on, you know. So, so that's what I like. I told you like how influence impact in your life, and that's what I you had to be connecting with your influence to bring those sounds when you play with some someone new, you know. So, and that's what I'm trying to do playing, you know, like I, when I, the last work that I did, it was with Michelle Camilo. And um, and I was trying to thinking all those years working as a Latin bass player, why can I add that it's, it's feel good, but change the whole vibe that it was doing before. So that's how, how everything is be like this for me. It's like a collection of things. Um, I try to improve my my playing you know and um and i think it's it's, it's going well <laughs> so even we don't have gigs right now because this thing but uh but i can hear myself when i record stuff myself and uh but that's what i that's what i uh, i was talking to Zach. you know like man you know like to influence in ourselves some people get influenced but they never do not nothing with those influence they just stay you know like okay yeah it's cool you know i just Cause maybe because I have so much respect with those people that I really work with it and uh, and people that I'm keep listening, you know, and uh, that every time I play or a ballad or I play like a contemporary music, I play classical music. I think in those guys, you know, the first things come in my brain of oh, Freddy Silva, you know, of Ivan Stankovko, you know, a, 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 Buda, a bass player, classical bass player from Budapest. So um, that's kind of like a do my resume faster but uh, i would like to you guys uh ask me questions you know because maybe with one question we can move to another 
subject too, which is I, I love it because it's kind of interaction like music, you know. I want to keep it like like this. <laughs> so, but um, the only way that I ask me question, you have to click your microphone so I can hear you. <laughs> so, so please go ahead, ask me question. <laughs> Um, I was just wondering if there was, uh, especially for the composition that you just played for us, if uh -huh. there was um, anything that particularly motivated you to pick that up, like, you know, just that moment where things pop in your head. Well, uh, believe it or not, everything started in March when this COVID arrived here that uh, I have like 145 concert canceled around the whole, around between Australia, Japan, China, <laughs> Europe, uh, Central America, Puerto Rico, and the United States. So it was like a big impact when I see all everything is not happening, it's cancer, cancer. I go like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? And, I, and I'm pretty sure it's not only me. We're talking about a lot of people. Mostly I spend six to seven months on tour and the rest between New York and Puerto Rico. But so getting to that question like uh well i say you know i told you you know sack is here you know i say well what is i don't know what to do man you know wow so it's gonna be heavy you know um it it took me a, a little time to process the whole situation you know especially like all the work that i have like it just get canceled you know and uh so I started like getting my old material, like really old material, like when I was back in at the conservatory, you know. So, and uh, I found like material that I was like, probably I never touched you because it's so difficult. So I say, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna study that, you know. I'm gonna challenge myself to see where I am in the stage of life as a bass player and a musician. So, so I started by March, April, April working, uh, practicing a lot, you know, recording myself and keep with the bowing, you know, a lot of classical stuff, technique, you know, uh, by late April, um, after, you know, we lost so many people here because the Kobe, I sat down with a, a music sheet and, uh, I start with, uh, uh, this is not the, I have a lot of other compositions. But I started with uh, with uh, another one, and uh, yeah, it just go pop in my brain automatically one melody and the rhythm. And uh, the thing about this project is funny because I mean I, I haven't even recorded yet, but uh, but uh, now that you ask the question, so I wanna prove that I can not prove in a sense like hey I'm the best. I just wanna like with all this knowledge that I have in life so far. And remember, I'm gonna keep continuing learning. So, but I wanna like in this stage of life also with this impact in, in life too, that uh, we have. I, I, I wanna do a solo album playing, showing, you know, like my my skills of playing with, with the bow or pizzicato, but also playing something that we call choral melody. It's like when you play the melody and you comp yourself, comping yourself. And uh, so in those, in this particular uh, tune, you, I use rhythms from, from where I'm from, you know, I use rhythm from the, from the uh, bomba sica, you know, it's a rhythm that uh, is, is, is part of their, our family in uh, between Mayagüez, which is a town in Puerto Rico in the West, from where I from where I from from the South Ponce and Loiza, which is a northeast, and uh, they have uh, Sika, Holandes, and Yuba is the most typical rhythms from from the Bomba uh, family. And uh, so I, 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 the first uh, when I when I start writing this tune, the first thing it came with was the the Bomba rhythm. You know, you go like okay, because I have a, a order. Tunes that I have is more like really contemporary, other some more like uh, classical using double stop. There's some tunes that I tune in the bass in different keys. So it allowed me to do chords, you know. So pretty interesting, you know. I'm really, I'm glad that I, I opened that door for myself, you know. I started doing this. It's like, it's very interesting. I never done that in my life. So, um, 
But going back to this composition, so the first thing was the the rhythm. Right? Go like that. And I go like, okay, I got the rhythm. Now I, not now what? <laughs> so, um, and it's funny because bass player tuning like always like G D A E, you know, and I, and I say I'm tired of hitting the E, always low E. So let me tune the B. So I tune the E on B. So I got more like kind of like del barril. If you if you Google Google it, the 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 instrument that use for that rhythm. It's called like, like el tambor, the, the bomba, el barril de bomba, sorry. Um, there's different sides. So the first one back in the, wow, in the 40s, 50s, they had the big one. It's like so big that the, it's like a kind of like a, a trash can, you know, and the people sit over over then and they sound so low. They sound like a doo, 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 doo. So I, that's what I decided to tune the bass like thinking that beat but real so i got the the beats like and then i just add the melody in the top that's the first part of the of the, of the tune you know like uh, like always you're gonna hear the presence of that b pedal under like boom the melody is kind of like b mo the melodies around b model b minor so so and then, you know, I start adding harmonics, you know, so between when I play the melody, ar harmonics, but I'm always trying to think in, this is the, this is the, 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 this is the downbeat. This is the big one. Then the second, the second sessions that, uh, it just changed like a happiness melody, you know, like, a just, it's so, there's always, I always say there's always light at the end of the tunnel. So. So we go to from B model to G major sound, and then then the letter C, I add another f uh, rhythms that uh, is from my country too. Uh, it's called Hibaro music, you know. So so I have the the, the sound of the cuatro puertorriqueño playing those melodies. If you if you go Google it or go to to uh, YouTube or iTunes. You can hear like Hibaro music, and the the first thing you're gonna hear is like the the cuatro going like and they call those rhythms called uh, seis, and there's like so many type of seis: seis corrido, seis fajardeño, seis orocobeño, and uh, so so. That's a lot, you know. And I just had this one is like uh, uh, fajardeño, so and then that's what I play the melody on the C session, introducing the Puerto Rico, you know, like, and of course, I add some uh, three bars in the middle. Uh, and, and then, you know, where I start playing solo is going back to the bomba rhythm again, you know, over those changes. So basically, that's, that's kind of like, kind of simple, you know, structure simple, but it's more like how I can play by myself, you know, I don't need an extra bass or an, a piano player or a guitar player, which I love have a guitar player to my uh, other projects that I, that I have, you know, but uh, basically this is like uh, the, the, how I, everything come together for this particular composition and uh, uh, that I wrote, like this one had the day, that was, that was in June. So it was kind of the latest one. So, and I entitled Innocencia which is innocence, you know, like, it's a, I mean, this, uh, like I say, man, this, this pandemic impacted me very, very hard, emotional, you know, see so many, even friends, they get into the hospital because of this thing. So, so that's what I title like, you know, innocence. But, but that, I, I have other ones with better titles. That is not that depressed. <laughs> so uh, uh, is that good? That question, the, the answer? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. A another question, please, that are you uh, want to ask me? Go ahead. Don't be scared. <laughs> nobody? If nobody has another question, I once you said the thing about the bow, I was really interested into um, what inspired you to pick up the bow because I'm studying with a new teacher 
uh, who's a classical teacher, and he asked me, like, why do I want to play with a bow? I was like, I have no idea. Okay. Uh, so, wh what, what is your name? Because I don't see you. So. Oh, sorry. My name is Sam. Sam. Okay. Okay. Just to, just to make sure, how many people are here bass player? Like, like, if there's any way that I can see more faces. Oh, okay. Th that's better. Okay. One, two bass player. Two bass players only? Ah, come on. Nah, kidding. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> hey, man. Bass player, man. We take the, all the gifts around. <laughs> uh, okay, son. I see you now. Okay. I, I was, I was like only with three faces. So that's why. Um, um, well, the, the bow, you know, mentioned the bow. Um, I start picking this thing around eight to nine, you know, because uh, uh, I was, my first one was like electric bass. So, um, so when I was taking lessons, you know, in the, in the, in the private school in Puerto Rico, in Ponce, uh, going to that classroom, I had see those big bass in the corner, so huge, you know, and, uh, Every time I arrive a little bit early and I pick one of these things and I start just playing, and it sounds like a cow, you know, like, raw. <laughs> but it was funny because my teacher was like watching me from his desk, you know, and say, do you like, do you like that sound? And like, I don't know if I like it, you know, it sounds like a, they're killing a pork or some or pig, you know, <laughs> so, you know, when you grab the, the strings, like, but eventually, believe or not, it, a year after he just like man you know what let let's let's start switching back and forth so you can learn the acoustic but uh but it was heavy because when i started playing it was something different two different words you know so with with what which changed my brain divide my brain too because now when i play acoustic i think different when i play electric i think completely different so and uh i start playing the acoustic first pizzicato so no bow yet so just to learn the fingerboard you know how it is you're a bass player people they know bass player the positions you know and uh, then he say okay let's let's grab a bow and he had two he had this one this french bow and the german bow which is grammy like this i don't i just feel more comfortable with the french bow so um i just put in my my fingers and i start playing and then the sound start came natural, you know, and say, like, oh man, you sounds great, you know, so wait, why not? Let's keep doing that, you know, and it's like, I just keep enjoying more and more and uh, and until I feel like, oh, I connect with this instrument, this instrument is part of my, myself. And that's why my teacher, he was recommend me to go once in a, every two months to the guy that I mentioned before, Federico Silva, which is was the Pablo Casar, disciple of Pablo Casar. He was the first year of the symphony orchestra in Puerto Rico. So he was sending me just to take one lesson with him, you know, just to develop the sound of Boeing, you know, more getting to the, more connecting with the classical music. Cause he, he saw something in me like, man, you got it natural. You know, some guys they're staying here forever and they never got the sound. So I just like feel so comfortable. So I said, man, let's, why not, man? Something new. I, I was, like I said, I like to learn s new stuff, you know, in life. And uh, then uh, I learned it and uh, that's the way I keep playing, you know. And, uh, and that's, I didn't use the bow in that particular tune, but I have other composition. But not only here, like you can hear a lot of records that I use the bow in a lot. And I have so much respect with the sound because uh, I don't know how many people that are in the, into jazz music that you hear a lot of jazz players picking this and uh, and that's when you want to stop the record because <laughs> it sounds no good sound, you know? And uh, I have great conversation that I also, I'm, I'm happy to call friends like John Paritucci, uh, Carlitos Enrique, uh, uh, Chris McBride, you know? And they're like, we're talking the phone, you know? Asking questions, man, you know? It's hard play uh, with the ball fast, you know? And say, you know what is, what is hard? Because classical music, you rehearse classical music a lot. And then you know when, what's in the new part, then you're going to like, oh, I'm going to play hard. In this part, I'm going to play pianissimo. I'm going to, I'm going to legato this sound. But in jazz, things happen so fast that 
you had this it's too, it's too thin that you, you put your brain and you in your bow in and then that's what uh, you don't know what to do and then it sounds kind of rough like blah, blah, blah. so but people they had those skills together like Christian McBride I would say is one of the guys that uh they got that the technique very very clear actually he studied classical music in Philadelphia so and uh and he still say man I'm working on it because it's hard the other guy is like uh Robert Hertz you know the, the teacher main teacher in Michigan State University and uh Cali like I mentioned Carlitos Enrique man it's incredible he got incredible bowing but uh it's like for us for bass player that playing with this it's gonna be for the rest of our, or our life you <laughs> know getting the, the, sound, the good sound with this because if you play wrong with this they're gonna look at you really weird you know <laughs> but uh but you know like like also is depend what kind of string you're using your instrument you know because some people use uh gut string i wouldn't recommend gut string with this because it's not good so and uh i just use regular string so just to get better touch with the bow so But yeah, that's a, that's around that around that age that I picked the bow, you know, until today that is still working the bow. <laughs> yeah. How about anyone? Please, another person. Don't be shy. Ask me anything. How about Le Lena? Lena or Dempsey Miller or Charles? Come on, Charles, you look too comfortable in that couch. <laughs> uh, no, no question. No, nothing else. Hey, Ricky, it's Zach. Okay. Uh, I was actually wondering if you could talk a little bit about uh, how you approach practicing electric and acoustic bass and treating them like, you know, if when you're a bass, if I, they're two different instruments, but you're still a bass player when you're playing both of them. But you have to kind of approach how you study them, what you practice on them, and even the, the types of music you play and your language of playing differently when you're studying them right yeah yeah i mean that's what i would say when, when i took i was answering the question to sam like to sam like about this is it's divide my brain too because even this if you're only acoustic bass player and you pick the bow it's already two division because this is another word the bow you know but then people like me they also playing electric and then some people they play baby bass That's another thing. The mentality completely changed. The technique changed. Everything. The tune. Everything. It's like triple hard work. But if you got it, hey, open doors for gigs. So, but uh, answered. You know, go to your question. Back to your question. Um, well, yeah, I, I say already that I start with electric bass really young. You know, and uh, and um, then I pick the acoustic bass. You know, around between eight and nine. You know, and I keep both until today you know so my typical routine as you know you're my roommate so you probably hear me playing a lot you know so but sometimes i divide my day you know like if if let's put it like a, a busy week without kobe <laughs> so so monday to friday and in new york i'm not let's say like i'm not touring let's say like monday to friday i had like between gigs to say okay how i can divide my time in six hours i could do it you know it's always just over time you know so i put three and three in those three one hour and a half one hour and a half one hour and a half so it's breaks between so normally i start with always acoustic because i got that thing from my teacher it stayed with me forever it's just always like in the morning get the bow do slow notes you know and 60 the metronome so and i go there you know until I finish. Then I pick the electric and I do a stretch between just to clean my brain that is I'm picking another instrument completely. Yes, we use the same if if people put a chart you're gonna it's the same thing, right? Reading in bass cliff. Bass cliff, yeah, but uh um just sound uh, just the sound automatically the name of the instrument say is electric bass acoustic bass it's two different thing you know and uh just electric you plug in the bass and start playing yes people do that but uh, I, in this stage of my life i have so much respect the way i have so much respect with acoustics that electric for me you have multiple sounds in your electric so because also require a lot of technique so 
and I I do a lot of technique in my electric bass between sound rhythm you know between you know here where you play between the pickups you know so and uh and it's funny because sometimes when I pick the electric bass already my brain came records with between electric bass or baby bass <laughs> automatically never comes something with acoustic you know it's funny you know so I don't know why maybe because my ears just get used to like okay let me hear something electric you know or, or, or something in a baby that I can play with the electric so um and you know fr from there I just do like exercise sometimes I just I just do it to warm up an electric I can pick some books that I use for classical bass but it's super fast you know just to get warm up my left hand you know but then automatically I switch and then I start getting to records that I really want to check it out or, or transcribe some like amazing groove, you know, so or, or a tune, a completely tune that albums that I love it and I respect for so many bass players that I respect and admire for years, you know, and uh, and literally that's the way I, I kind of like approach, you know, practice the electric compare with uh with acoustic because it's it's completely two different things you know I, some people say like it's the same I, I i i would say i'm not agree with that so uh it's too different that's what is funny if you, bass player here if you i don't know if you play both but uh it's funny when you every if if that happened to you already before or before like that you <laughs> that you have a rehearsal with some band and normally they require acoustic bass, but then you decide to arrive with electric and you play electric and they look at you. <laughs> of course they look at you because that's a different sound, you know. That's that's how how clear that you're gonna notice like they go like this, you know. And they hey, if you play killing, they're gonna like, oh man, I, I dig it, you know, this is cool, you know. Or vice versa, a guy that play always electric, one day he show up with acoustic. And the first thing what they gonna notice because this is a big instrument, so and then you say, oh, really? You're going to play that bass in this tune? And then probably the guy play and bring in something new to the music. Because, like I've said, they change sounds. Whatever you put the electric, you can change the whole sound on a big band. You can change the whole sound of quartet or trio. Same thing. You bring the acoustic, you change the whole thing. Because acoustic, probably they go more like quiet because it's acoustic instrument. Electric, you tell the guy, you want more? Yeah, I have more gains. <laughs> But uh, that's how n I normally approach to 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 the music with when I, when I have to play both. That uh, I've been lucky to 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 working you know bringing the both electric and acoustic at the same time with Joe Luck, a guy that I mentioned before. Uh, another guy that I I, I forgot to mention is like uh, Daphne Prieto, uh, a great Cuban drummer. We did a Big Bang album pretty sure like four years ago, I guess. Uh, same thing. I play both electric and acoustic, and uh, and um, and I know, and, and a new one that I just released last month. It was like a Manuel Valera, and I play electric there for, with a big band. So, but it's like the the approach that I'm bringing to to feel good. It's like okay, I'm using electric, but how I can make feel good this big band, and they're grooving, they're like comfortable, I keeping the volume so. So keeping, you know, like as a professional, it's like, okay, I'm not going to bring the bass super loud. So, so some people, some people had trouble, you know, with that because some people say, no, I, I, this is the way I play electric and they play loud. And that's, you know, that's why you have to find concept approach, you know, and play with more people because when you play with more, more, many, many people, it help you as you're into your, you know, get your own sound and your conscience of when you play uh it's, it's kind of like calling mature you know like because uh, every time you play with someone older than you definitely you're gonna learn something new believe me <laughs> um and uh believe or not um uh one of my latest gig that i was so proud to say that i was like i can't believe i had i, I did this gig it was like saturday night live you know like i don't know the, that show so and I can't believe it when I get that gig, you know, it's like, this is happening to me, you know, so, um, but it's the same thing. I have to, my, my brain is a different type of 
playing the electric bass. It's a show. It's like, it's like we play with click trap. So I become again like a new student in this kind of square stage, you know. So because I'm pretty sure if I the first gig that I did with SNL, if I began with all this ego that people sometimes put out there, like yeah, man, I play I play with everyone, you know. I probably I would not even they didn't even call me back again because I probably gonna be horrible in the gig. So I just become like a let me learn this show, let me learn the music, let me look around, let me absorb this good energy. And this is new because this is with cast stuff like that. This is a different when you play in a club. This is a different when you play in the studio. This is a different when you play in a big stage or outdoor. So as you see, that's another thing that I learned with another amazing guitar player from Philly, Kurt Russell and Winkel. He say, man, when you, even when you rehearsal on a small place, um, or you playing at Carnegie Hall, or you playing like a football square, like huge up and door outdoor concert, he said, take a minute when everybody is quiet and look ar look around and trying to change that negative energy to positive, and then you're gonna sound so great that night, believe it or not. And you know what? It doesn't matter if you need. Uh, a hundred thousand people clapping or probably only one that only person is gonna make your night and they're gonna push you to the next day to practice more because that's that's uh, that's how i see music myself you know because also if they, if they clap it the, the, the hundred thousand hey good for you you know but uh but you know what i mean it's about the energy you know and learning because i'm learning for you even i wish i can hear you everybody talking but i know it's a zoom thing but uh that's what I do. Masterclass is funny because it's like a, it's like a, we playing. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a chamber music. It's like, oh, call and respond. Okay, great. Oh, oh, interesting that you say that. So you know, it's, it took, it take me to another path, and that's what I love about uh, arts in general. You know, like I love paints. You know, I love poetry. So, uh, I say to all my students, private students that I have, I say, man, you know. I know if you like one style of music that you really lock into that style because you want to be dude, that's good. Do that. But this is gold for bass player. Uh, if you want to work, just learn other genre or styles because if if you don't want it and you could be good in, in, in the style that you're doing, let's say like you're so good playing uh, tango, like, like Argentina music, you're the monster or... Or you play a slap bass, you know, like Marcus Miller. You love that thing. Awesome. But if you lock in that little square, what happened if Michel Camilo called you last minute to to do a tour? Because somebody saw you playing and said, man, yeah, this guy sounds great. But it was more than slapping the bass. And you're not ready to play a single no with swing, you know. And, and that's where you, you're done, you know. So... Because there's a huge list of bass players, you know. So, and and I, I I wish I wish I can know more about rhythms from around the world because there's so many, you know. I wish I can live at least 300 years old so I can I can go I can go to Brazil, you know. Because like, it's a lot of rhythms, you know. And uh, and uh, I, that's a problem that I've been seeing that actually in the, the the student that I teach right now. They, they, they say, no, I want to play straight ahead. You know, I say, oh, that's great, man. I love it. But do other in the side. Just try to listen to some other stuff, you know, and keep the straight ahead happening. Because if you lock in the straight ahead, so what is next? <laughs> that's when I ask it, then they, they don't know what they, they go like this. Well, I don't know. You know, so that's the problem because time change technology. Now you had the technology before it was, I remember, um, uh, CDs <laughs> or even before LP, so it was hard to 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 copy what what you were listening or what Lena or what Zach or what Charles was listening. So, I mean, what are you listening? So, oh, I cannot tell you. This is private. Now everything's out there, but everything's out there, but nobody using it, you know. And that's like oh, that's kind of funny, you know. And uh, being living in the city, I can see the new generation coming, and it's hard to tell. It's like two or three that that probably like their brains blow, you know, but some of them, this just probably happened the same thing. They just focus in one style, which once again, don't make me wrong. Fucking once, fucking in, 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 focusing one style, um, 
it's not bad. It just say like, well, if you have a, a warranted job that are you gonna play with Winton, then go ahead, you know. So, but if you don't know what is gonna expect, it's like a classical music. Like, well, you're waiting for the guy to retire from Carnegie Hall. No, I don't have time to that, you know. But I'm gonna continue practice the classical music because you never know, you know. And that's what I, it keep the games to all bass player like keep you know like shitting on electric and like and, and acoustic classical listen transcribe you know just keeping my 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 i just I, i'm trying to find the right word you know it's like um uh, my spirit you know like flying around me you know with those good energies good good uh Inform new information that's around me that I can grab it and absorb it, you know. That's what I that's what I've been doing in this kind of pandemic quarantine, you know. So, because I have so much time, you know, there's no excuse, you know. So, and I get it. Some people don't have the time that I probably have, you know. And now the schools are back, you know, via virtual. But uh, there's always time. There's no excuse. Believe me, there's no excuse. Um, and you can tell every man when Shorty can tell you the same thing. There's no excuse, you know, like there's always, you can find half an hour, but that find half an hour, you can change something in your, in your personality. But if you, if you don't, you know, if you don't do it, then I don't know what to tell you. you know? It's just like, it's hard, you know, because I got students that I got kind of like, they don't, their energy going down. Like, I don't know. I think I want to change something else. Like, well, you're the only one to decide what you want to do life. I cannot do that that's a big decision so student teacher like i say i'm a teacher but i'm not a teacher at the same time a student so just want you know just one of you let you know guys like uh, i feel like you guys you know like uh, I, I it's like this is a master class but i feel like just your master class too so because you're asking questions like wow wow okay hmm. so zach answer me that question and i respond you know and he probably asked something else and say like, wow you see that's how f for me that's how I interact with masterclass stuff like that. So, um, anything else that you want to ask me? You want me like play with the bow? You want <laughs> to talk about my glasses? You <laughs> uh, No, seriously, ask, ask me uh, something. Uh, hi, it's Charles. Uh, okay. Thank Charles. you so much for this. I, no, I'm going to no. ask just a quick question. Um, it's it, about when you're creating your own compositions, when you're, when you're, when you're writing, when you're, when you're improvising with yourself, uh, practicing, I, I, I don't know how to, uh, do you use, uh, do you ever use any kind of like, uh, rhythm tracks or layers or like looping yourself or to anything like that so that you, you get some call and response because, one of the things that's been so hard during this pandemic is being playing alone that can drive you crazy. I mean, I know Ch famously Charlie Parker did it for like X number of years after he failed the first time on stage, but, yeah. but like, you know, it really is hard to woodshed completely by yourself. Can yeah. you talk about that? Yeah. What, what is your instrument? I play guitar. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, well, before, I mean, I play a little bit piano, so, in, when I released my first album, all the music was on the piano, so I composed everything. On the, no, I never touched the bass ever. So I did even, you know, you had garage band stuff like that to create loops to see how sound, you know. But I didn't. I guess because uh, when I get the deal with the label, the the record label, I I was doing everything so fast that I said, yeah, I got it. So so I just put bass line as a bass player. Sometimes I didn't even write the bass line. I just like create because I, I'm in the bass player, but uh, I, I wrote the line, you know, I have that. Yeah. I have that the, in my, in my notebook, I have the ideas, but I never had the chance. Like now, actually now, no, with this project, so like the solo album, but I have, I have new music for my, for my, my, my other band, which is more like, like jazz music, you know, contemporary jazz music. So I have already like, yes, I have like two or three tunes that I that I develop using like logic or garage, you know, has a putting like some drums idea how the sounds and then use and tracking, you know, playing some bass now with software or or those uh, duet 
that, that you can record from home. So so then, yes, because then uh, you can hear later to say how. Let me see how it sounds so far, which is great. You know, so, oh, man, that doesn't sound bad, you know. So, and, uh, but, yeah, I mean, the, the way I compose music, uh, some, sometimes uh, ideas come first, like rhythms, you know, because maybe because I'm a bass player, you know, I, I, I have a lot of rhythms in my brain, you know, and uh, the second thing is just harmony. So there's a couple of tracks or, or in my album that also it, it, it was first the melody. And uh, and I, I always I always put like melody and bass. That's it. And, and you see the whole space between because that space, I don't know, it could be piano, it could be guitar. So which is in my record, this is guitar, too, you know, but uh, but it's funny because always I think there's a melody, right? And uh, if I hear the rhythm already, then I can play just just I just put a click track sometimes and I play the melody with space and then after I hear that you know a couple of times I say oh my god I just play by accident I play a bar of five and I play a bar of nine I didn't expect that so, so I say okay let me fix this this could be in four four you know but uh just to sound like more I'm talking about like natural way but if I want to be like this then, you know, I go like, okay, this tune is going to be in a 4-4. Four, four. I want to do it in 4-4. Four, four. But sometimes when you sit down, you know, in front of your computer and you have everything, you don't know what to do, right? Because sometimes you look like, I don't have any idea. So myself, sometimes idea come from, you know, like looking through a window, like, like, like running in the park, you know, I hear some strange sound in my brain because... The, the 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 last thing that I want to do is like copy another record. That's you cannot do that. That's no. Then you, what are you doing? You know, so it's like for me, writing new music is like it's you. It's the new sound. What is gonna happen in 2020 or 2021? You know, like what is what is new? So so basically, yeah. That's that, and I recommend you know like composer that like, if you play piano, of course, because then you have both hands i always think in the bass line sometimes you can think a nice bass line you know and uh no even don't even think in chords yet just think the bass line and think one line no melody just one no chords no nothing because already you're gonna have harmony between the bass and the little single melody on the top and that's myself that's how i develop music the, the composition some people have another structure like oh i got the chords do 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 and then put the rhythm i got that's if you hear my if you listen to my record you're gonna hear it and say but man that's a, much, a lot of beautiful melodies but yeah i put that chord after because i start looking at the, the score myself like this and i hear like okay this is a bay that i played that day <laughs> and then I, this is the single melody that i create that day and then say now this space i'm going to add a guitar but I don't want to, I want to use the guitar like a completely another instrument, not like playing exactly the same way of the piano play or the guitar player play or the, or the, I'm sorry, or the bass player playing. So, so I asked him, I, I start adding like poorly rhythms against the bass. Then you had the piano player put in the chords and that's how I create like, com an, like, like a, a composition, you know? So, uh, it's a formula, you know, we're talking, people call it f different formulas to compose because definitely you ask another people, they're going to tell you different formulas. And now I, I, I start with the, with the harmony and I, I, and I, and I get the melody, which is great. Me, because maybe as a bass player, I always listen low <laughs> and then super high. <laughs> the mid register sometimes, I don't know what's going on, <laughs> but, uh, but you should try, you know, you're a guitar player, so you can do. You can come yourself because guitar players do that, you know, like chord and melody, which is that's what I'm trying to do now in acoustic, how I can play and comp and copy myself. But uh, and it's funny because I was when I was in high school, I was I was listening a lot Joe Pass, and uh, the way he was playing, his sound first it was like classical sound that jazz guitar so big, you know. And I go like, man, this guy is insane, you know, like how he moves. He sounds like a three guitars at the same time. And so, no, it's only him, you know. So, and that's another thing that uh, bass players always adapt to playing electric, how we can play melodies and and, and try to comping ourselves, you know. So, but uh, 
Yeah, I, I suggest to yourself, you know, like just if you as a guitar player, you have a melody that is in your head, record it in, I don't know what software you have, but just record it and then like start thinking, don't think in chords, 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 I think you're on mute. Your sound is doing something weird, Ricky. Yeah. No, no, I, I, yeah, I, I, uh, unmute yourself again. Try unmuting yourself. Hold up. Wait, Ricky, hold up. Hold up. Uh, can you unmute yourself? It says you're muted. Yeah, but I did okay. nothing. You did something. <laughs> no, I did it because um, it, it, it got stuck on the word chords for a while. For, for It was uh, repeating the uh, word chords. It was like going chords, 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 chords. It was weird. Right. Yeah, <laughs> but it's all good now. But but <laughs> Ch Charles, do, do you do you hear me? What I was saying, everything. I hope. Up until the the chords part. After that, I <laughs> I didn't know. But I basically got what you're saying. Like you, yeah, you're you're. Uh, if you get the melody, if you hear a melody, then too. Yeah, it's, it, it was like a playing more like 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 just. Look, look at the two boys only, you know, and then two boys like low no and the high no and then and think in rhythm. And then the middle, just then you add the, the harmony that you want to add later. So, but I normally the way I, the way I compose is always models because I don't have a key. I can go travel different keys, you know, so. But, but if I want to be really specific, like, OK, this tune, I want to sound that tune in E flat, you know, specific E flat. OK. E flat, three flats, okay, B flat, E flat, E flat. So, which is good, that gonna have sound, but mostly the way I play, you know, I just like this composition. I, I mean, when I when I write it down and then I look and write and I start analyzing, it's like, okay, this is between B model, <laughs> go to the G major for some reason, which is really related, kind of close. And I, and, I, and I ending in a part that I don't know what happened. So it's with this completely chromatic thing. So, but. For me, this is music, you know, like uh, I like to break the rules all the time in music. So <laughs> with all respect with some people, they're more like locking one thing. So I always break the rules. And hey, if Joe saw when I did, why not? You know, and his music is incredible. So <laughs> but uh, if you man, you know, just try that and see how how you feel, you know, and uh, and the good thing with with this software now and then logic or pro tools something that i man you can do a lot of stuff and by yourself you know and then if you don't like it you just delete it and then try it again you know and sometimes you know something's not about to happen today just don't touch it let it let 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 it go and go tomorrow tomorrow's another day you know so your brain doesn't suffer or you don't get frustrated yourself like oh i don't get it ah, you know so because it happens it, believe me it happens it's happened to me too you know there's some days that uh the sound is not good <laughs> at all, you know? And it's like, you know what? Today is warm. I'm going to walk around. And tomorrow I'm going to pick the bass. And it's, it's, it happens. Music's like that. And I'm pretty sure it happens to bas basketball players. They have a rough night, you know, and a dancer. It doesn't feel, the ankle feel weird. So it's just something natural, you know, it's common. It's not like in music at all. So um, anything else that... <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see these two ladies like like laughing. You know, like, I'm pretty sure. Hey, what are you What are you thinking right now? <laughs> um, Sat, do you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, what should I what, Should I play more? Or, or? Yeah, I was I was gonna say, why don't you play something else? 
Why don't you play some more? You guys want to hear me playing something else? I don't know what I'm going to play, but uh, but oh, or or do you want to keep talking? <laughs> play something. <laughs> uh, but I mean, like like nothing, right? No question. Because I, if you don't, if you don't have any question, I'm going to say something before I play. Um, and then I guess we say bye for now, you know. And uh, and I definitely, you know, the, the, the stuff that I was about to play t today on and I to and okay, I'm going to give it to Zach. So yeah, you, send it to me so, and I'll, I'll share a playlist with them. So you can have it, you know, and then check it out, you know, if you like or not, you know. So, um, but um I just want to say thanks to, well, Zach Alja, you know, to to give me the invitation to do this math class. You know, it's like I like it because it's like you see new faces, you know, and uh, and uh, I hope you know you learn something new, you know, and uh, definitely I hope also to see you one of you guys playing, you know, like soon, you know, when this things clear a little bit better, you know, so. So I can say, oh man, I remember that guy, you know, something like well, that. Well, uh, maybe, maybe when uh, the pandemic has cooled down a little bit more, uh, yeah. we'll be using Shapeshifter kind of as an education studio at Alja. And I was thinking it'd be cool to be able to do some master classes that are really focused on playing, and you, we can get some bass players to come, and they can yeah to you, and you can offer yeah, that would be awesome. In the comments, that would be great. That would be great. Yes. So so. Well, you know, thank you very much. And um, I don't know what I'm gonna play. I mean, th my brain's right now. I'm looking to the sky and I'm looking to you. It's like I don't know. I'm just gonna pick the bay and see what's happening. Okay. All right. No, thank you, Ricky. All right, you're welcome. Thank you, Ricky. All right.
All right. Have a great night and uh, stay safe. And I hope to see you soon, you know, sometimes. Okay. Thank you. All Thank right. you.